Given f of x equals the quantity x plus two squared, we want to determine the domain so f of x is increasing and one to one. We also want to give the range and use interval notation. So here's a graph of our function f of x. Notice if we don't restrict the domain, this function is not one to one because horizontal lines would intersect this graph in more than one point. Notice the function is also decreasing on the left and increasing on the right. So notice if we consider this function only from the vertex to the right, the function is increasing and it's also one to one because horizontal lines would only intersect this half of the graph at one point. So now we'll determine the domain and range if we only want this half of the graph. Well the domain is a set of all possible x values, so if we project this graph onto the x-axis, notice how the domain would be from negative two to the right or from negative two to infinity, and it would include the vertex, so we'll include negative two in the domain. So the domain, using interval notation, would be from negative two to infinity, and it's closed on negative two, meaning it includes negative two. We could also express this using inequalities as x is greater than or equal to negative two. Now let's consider the range. The range is a set of all possible y values or outputs of this function on the restricted domain. Well, if we project this graph onto the y-axis, notice how the smallest y value would be zero, and from there it increases upward toward positive infinity. So the range would be the interval from zero to infinity closed on zero, meaning it includes zero, or we could say y is greater than or equal to zero. With this restriction, the function f is now one to one, so we can find f inverse of x. To do this, let's first write the original function replacing f of x with y. So we'd have y equals the quantity x plus two squared. And then to find the inverse, we interchange the x and y variables and then solve for y. So we have x equals the quantity y plus two squared. And now we'll solve this for y. The first step, we'll take the square root of both sides of this equation. So we'd have the square root of x equals the square root of the quantity y plus two squared. So we have the square root of x equals, normally this would be the absolute value of y plus two, but because of the restrictions here, we don't have to worry about that. This would just be y plus two. Last step, we'll subtract two on both sides we have the square root of x minus two equals y. This is our inverse function, solve for y. So we'll go ahead and replace y with f inverse of x. f inverse of x is equal to the square root of x minus two. And we're also asked to give the domain and range. Let's go ahead and do that. Because this is the inverse of function f, the domain of f is going to be the range of f inverse, and the range of f will be the domain of f inverse. So the domain will be from zero to infinity, closed on zero, and the range will be the interval from negative two to infinity. Let's go ahead and finish by verifying this graphically. We know that if we graph function f on the restricted domain, and we graph the inverse function on its domain, the two functions should be symmetrical across the line y equals x. And here's the graph of the original function on the restricted domain. And here's the graph of the inverse function graphed over its domain. And we can see that these two graphs are symmetrical across the line y equals x. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.